Ladies and gentlemen, is Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, engaging in human trafficking? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, stick around. We're going to be discussing this. A report recently came out that approximately 50 Venezuelan and Colombian migrants arrived at Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts by plane, which isn't terribly exciting on its own. What makes this particularly interesting is that according to some of the migrants, they were flown from Texas, told they would be going to Boston for expedited work papers, housing, and jobs, but sent to Martha's Vineyard, not Boston. Not only that, the Santa's communication director told Fox News the migrants were illegal immigrants, they were being flown as part of Florida's relocation program to transport illegal immigrants, and they were being transported to sanctuary destinations. These are all very important facts for what comes next, because what comes next is determining if this might be illegal. We're going to proceed for educational purposes as if these facts are all 100% accurate. I have no reason to believe that they aren't at this time, but they might not be. So, apply a big if to all of this video, and consider it a speculation presentation. My first thoughts when I started reading about this were, this might be human trafficking, it might be kidnapping, and I need to look at the federal laws and the laws of Texas, Massachusetts, and Florida. We can quickly rule out human trafficking on all four of those because that generally requires some sort of involuntary servitude and or a sexual act. The federal kidnapping statute requires someone to be held for ransom or reward, so that won't apply. Massachusetts kidnapping statute requires someone to be forcibly or secretly confined, which I would argue doesn't really count on a commercial airline you agreed to be on due to apparent false promises. So we'll scratch that as well. But then we get to Texas. Under Texas law, Kidnapping requires the intentional or known abduction of another person, defining abduction as the restraint of a person with the intent to prevent his liberation by secreting or holding him in a place where he is not likely to be found, or by using or threatening to use deadly force. That doesn't quite check out, but while looking into that, I discovered this. Unlawful restraint. A person commits an offense if he intentionally or knowingly restrains another person. Restrain means to restrict a person's movement without consent, so as to interfere substantially with the person's liberty, by moving the person from one place to another, or by confining the person. Restraint is without consent if it is accomplished by force, intimidation, or deception. Oh, wow. Yeah, that appears to meet the elements, and that may end up being a misdemeanor per person moved against whoever's moving them. But what about Florida? Could this meet the elements of kidnapping there? Well, it's complicated, which means my theory on this will probably never be tested. Florida statute on kidnapping has many elements, but contextually, there are only two that have to be met. A person must be abducted against their will, and it must be with the intent of interfering with any government or political function. So how would we establish that this is abduction? Florida doesn't seem to have any easily found definitions of the term within its laws, but if we look at the definition from, say, I don't know, the Cornell Law School, we discover that abduction means the taking of a person against their will, generally by means of persuasion, fraud, or force. Well, the migrants certainly were fraudulently persuaded by someone acting on behalf of the Florida government, meaning they only presumably consented because of an intentional misrepresentation of fact, meaning their consent was likely not actually given. This is a very common thing throughout U.S. law. If you get someone's consent through fraud or deceit, you don't really have their consent. Sure, you could argue that the migrants just misunderstood due to a possible language barrier, but that would still be fraud because the misrepresentation of fact was made negligently. Was all of this done to interfere with any, not just Florida's, but any government or political function? I would argue yes, since according to DeSantis' communication director, states like Massachusetts, New York, and California will better facilitate the care of these individuals who they have invited into our country by incentivizing illegal immigration through their designation as sanctuary states and support for the Biden administration's open border policies. Which seems like a long way of saying, oh, you want to show them a carrot? Here's the stick. Allow us to show you how much it hurts to be hit with it. And sure. Receiving unexpected migrants can be difficult for a government. I get it. And I imagine Florida is also very aware of that, which is why they would be aware that unexpectedly moving them somewhere else would interfere with that location's government or political function, especially when you're A, not calling ahead to let the receiving area know about this, and B, not actually moving them to a sanctuary state. Massachusetts is not a sanctuary state, folks. Sure. It has some sanctuary cities, but Martha's Vineyard is not one of them. 
As far as I can tell, the elements for kidnapping in Florida actually have technically been met, although don't hold your breath on seeing anything done about that. It's pretty easy to argue that what I've just presented is kind of flimsy. So let me hit you with this. 8 U.S.C. 1324, the federal law on bringing in and harboring certain aliens. Did DeSantis know the aliens had come to the United States in violation of the law? <laughs> His communications director said they were illegal immigrants, so yes. Were they moved within the United States? Why, yes, they were. That's it. Those are the only two elements. It feels too easy, almost. If I haven't missed something, a violation of these elements has a maximum sentence of five years in prison per person. 50 times five is a lot of years in prison. Although, of course, if DeSantis is found guilty of 8 U.S.C. 1324, he's not going to get the maximum sentence for it. Surely the governor of a state, who one might expect to be able to surround themselves with very intelligent people, would know how to get around this, right? Well, it appears the travel documents may have been processed by DHS agents, so this statute might not apply except... Rachel Self, an attorney in Massachusetts, has told reporters the home addresses listed on the DHS paperwork appear to have been chosen at random. One of the addresses was even in Tacoma, Washington, just south of me, and very far from Massachusetts, which makes it pretty difficult for them to check in with the ICE office nearest to their home address as required by their paperwork. But couldn't the migrants just change their address to Martha's Vineyard upon arrival? Well, maybe, but allegations exist that the migrants were told prior to boarding the plane to change their addresses through USCIS, which is not the correct agency. If the information on those documents was intentionally falsified, and intent does appear to exist, considering some of the migrants allegedly stated they had no home address within the United States, one could certainly argue the paperwork was not legitimate and 8 U.S.C. 1324 still applies. But not just that, it could also meet the elements of 8 U.S.C. 1324C if the provided document was falsely made in order to give someone a benefit under 8 U.S.C. And that opens up a whole new can of worms regarding state laws related to falsified documents. But in the interest of time, we'll push past that to my final question about this whole situation. Can DeSantis use public funds to move illegal immigrants from Texas to Massachusetts? Well, technically, I suppose so, because he did it using money from the 22-23 fiscal year budget. Now, in that budget, $12 million were set aside to facilitate the transport of unauthorized aliens out of Florida, because Florida stands against illegal human trafficking, whether it is being carried out by common criminals or by the federal government. I guess they don't mind so much if the state elected officials do it, though, right? Remember, it's a big if. A big if. But they didn't come out of Florida, they came out of Texas. And Texas Governor Greg Abbott has stated his office wasn't involved in this mess. However, you could present the argument that they did come out of Florida because the plane made a stop there. To which I counter with, then that money shouldn't have been spent getting them from Texas to Florida. And they weren't unauthorized because DeSantis paid to have them brought there. Also, it certainly helps establish the jurisdiction of Florida's kidnapping law if they stop from this state. Doesn't it? Fun things to think about, I'm sure. Anyway, with that out of the way, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, subscribe for more nonsense, check out the video description for my Etsy, which has sweet, sweet merch, and my Patreon, where you can find scripts to videos before they become videos. In fact, this video had its script on Patreon before I even filmed it. You could have found it there, saved yourself some time. Anyway, I'm just kidding. But until the next time, be good, stay safe. Also, I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, Ron, but try not to commit any human trafficking. Not that he did. I'm just saying, try harder not to.